Anytime you buy or sell a stock, there is a chance that you're not going to get it at the exact price it's currently trading at. This is called slippage and it happens because of liquidity issues at the supply and demand levels that are currently active on the ticker. But what if I told you there was a way that you could guarantee to only get filled at certain prices? These are called limit orders, and that's what we're going to be talking about on today's video, as well as tips and tricks for how you can utilize limit orders within the Thinkorswim trading application. Hit the like button if you're excited, and I'll jump into it. A stock at any given time has two values. There is a bid value and an ask value. The bid being what someone is willing to pay for that stock. The ask being what someone is willing to sell that stock for. And with limit orders, you can play either side of that. If I open my buttons here, actually, and we type in buy, you will see there is a buy the ask and a buy the bid. This will guarantee that you will only get filled at those levels if you hit those buttons. Because as I did in the intro, I'm using market orders. And what a market order is going to do is it's going to fill you on your selected quantity, no matter what, no matter what's sitting out there on the ask, how many shares are available to buy at a certain price, it's going to fill you no matter what, which will cause you sometimes to eat through the ask and will oftentimes cause you to get horrible fills, especially if you're trading really low float, really low supply stocks. So once again, what limit orders are going to do is they're going to ensure that when you buy or of course sell, that you are only going to buy or sell if the ticker is trading below or above, obviously for either buy or sell, whatever the price that you typed into your limit order is, or in this instance within Thinkorswim, and I'm pretty sure within any trading platform, you can have buttons to automatically set your limit at the ask or set your limit at the bid. Of course, if you are buying, if you are buying a stock, if you attempt to buy the bid, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to get filled. That means you're looking to join the current price that other people are willing to pay for this stock, right? If you buy the ask, you're much more likely to get filled quickly because you are willing to buy at the price that people are looking to sell the stock at, right? But the beauty of using buy the ask versus buy market Say you're trading, this is going to be a really low supply uh, example, but say you want to buy a thousand shares of a $1 stock, you go ahead and you hit buy market. If there is only a hundred shares on the ask at $1, you will eat through all those. It'll move up to the next price level, 101. If there's only 50 shares there, it'll move up to 102, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until it fills all your a thousand shares. That's slippage. That's why you get awful fills when using market orders in low supply situations. But if you were to hit by the ask at a thousand, a thousand shares at a dollar, if there's only a hundred on the ask, then you will only get filled a hundred. It will wait until the price comes down uh, or, or more people are willing to sell at a dollar. Whatever it'll do, it won't fill you above a dollar. That's how you use limit orders to avoid slippage. Let's jump into some more examples. I see you, by the way. I see you looking at this study on my chart and wondering what it is, wondering how it's giving up arrows at such good buy opportunities on the ticker. This is a custom study that I have created myself and it, along with all of my other custom studies, strategies, scanners, watch list columns, etc., are all available for download on my website, daytradingstrategies.net. There's a link at the top of the description. Go check it out. We'll see you over there. All right, so we've covered the basics of what limit orders are and how to set limit orders utilizing the buttons on your active trade window. Pretty simple stuff. We covered it relatively quickly. Once again, as always, any questions, comment section down below. I answer any constructive questions I get down there. Let's kind of jump down now to another layer of order execution knowledge, right? Say I'm in, I just bought a hundred more shares. You know, this is obviously paper trading, but I just entered another hundred shares of spy five, 15, 23, whatever. Now say I want to get stopped out. If the price breaks below this 51480 pivot here, which actually I'm going to brag on myself a little bit, my indicator, my arrows pointed this dip by very, very well here. So, um, but now let's say I want to get stopped out if it comes down below this 51480. This is going to be a little bit more thinkorswim specific, but 
these order types are prevalent across any active trade software. So even if the way that I do it, the setup that I do it, you can't copy if you're not using Thinkorswim, the knowledge is still important for you to understand. So if within Thinkorswim on my active trade window, I'm on the trade ladder down here. And if I scroll down to 514.79, if I click inside of this ask size box here, it's going to place a stop loss order for whatever quantity that I have typed in. So now I have a stop loss in place at 514.80. Now I can let this trade run, do whatever I wanna do for the rest of my day if it doesn't get stopped out down here. Now, guess what? If this curls, say, if this goes and makes a new high of day, if this goes and breaks 514.4 now, I want my stop loss to be based off of this pivot. All I would need to do, grab this, drag it up, just like that, my stop loss is now up here below this pivot. All your orders when they're on your chart like this, at least within Thinkorswim, are completely draggable. That is a feature that I love about this software. So um, also the flip side of that, say I'm a breakout trader and I want to buy new high of day. If I scroll up at 515.46, or let's say for, for psychology trading reasons, I want to buy if it breaks the half dollar, 515.50. Just like I did on the on the ask side, if I click on the bid size here, it's going to put a stop buy order out. So now if the price obviously gets up here, breaks high of day, breaks 515.50, I would buy 100 more shares of SPY. So that's sort of your stop loss and your stop purchase order types. Now let's dive. That was, let's call that level number two of knowledge transfer in this video. Let's step now even to level number three. During this whole video, I've been placing single orders. And when you're placing single orders, you can't then have two active orders open for the same share. So it won't let you have a, you know, profit lock sell and a stop loss exit on the same number of shares with a single order template. But if I open this drop down and I go to the TRG with bracket, there's of course multiple different ways you can set your offset here, either by a uh, value, by ticks or by percentages. I very simply like to just leave mine as the plus one and minus one value because once again, remember, all your values are draggable. I don't try to like build a value template from this screen. I'd rather just enter my trade where I want to enter. Give Thinkorswim's paper trading a second here. Hold on. But you will immediately see once I get filled here. Yes, thank you. I now have a plus one limit for my sell. Obviously, if the stock goes up a point from where I just entered at, it will exit. If it comes down a point from where I just entered at, it will exit for a stop loss. And now I can drag these. Say once again, I want to get stopped below 514.80 if it breaks below this pivot. And I want to get stopped out if when I want to take profit, should I say if it breaks high of day just drag this down as well there you go now with once again a trg with bracket order you can now have both a profit lock and a stop loss on the same shares that you bought so not only did we talk about what limit orders are in this video how to set them up but we also talked about what both stop loss and buy stop orders are and we talked about how you can set up bracket orders all very very important all things you can implement into your trade strategies to help yourself become a better trader not to mention you can head over to daytradingstrategies.net to get yourself access to this indicator as well as over 15 other indicators over 15 strategies over 10 different scanners all kinds of awesome stuff over there daytradingstrategies.net link at the top of the description make sure you guys go check that out like subscribe do all the things that's going to do it for this video. But on the outro, I will have a video going over actually this custom indicator. So if you're more interested in learning more about that, check out that video next. Trading stocks. He talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks. <laughs>